they don't study the Reformation in school because it was a religious movement, because it created the Lutheran Church, or because it created Protestantism. They celebrate or they learn about the Reformation because it set in motion changes that were huge. It set in motion economic changes, political changes, shifts in power, things that people had taken for granted for hundreds of years were suddenly turned upside down. And by the time it was over, Europe had changed. And not too long after that, the rest of the world changed too. You can go back into history books and learn what happened during the world, during the Reformation in the world. But before that change took place, there was a much smaller change that happened. And that's the change I'm most interested in today. What happened in the heart of Martin Luther that, that sparked that fire that burned across the world? See, Martin Luther had been a good monk. He'd done everything the church had said to do. He had done everything ten times over to earn God's favor. He performed religious works. He chastised his own body. He woke up at 3 a.m. to pray. He made long confessions. And, and his confessors say that he would just pour them to tears, coming back and back with more and more confessions. Everything he tried to do to earn God's forgiveness and favor, but it was never enough. And he felt like God just stood over him with condemnation and anger. He summed it all up with this phrase, the righteousness of God. So here's what Martin Luther said about the righteousness of God. He said, who can love such a God who deals with sinners according to such a standard of justice? We are all sinners, and none of us stands a chance. Will not such a God devour us all in a consuming fire? That's what Martin Luther saw when he looked at God. This righteous God that he could never reach by himself. He could never live up to the expectations that God had. But as he was studying the book of Romans, something major happened. Something major in his life changed. In reading those words of Paul, he began to see that, that he didn't have to put himself right with God. Because God had done what he couldn't do. God had sent Jesus Christ. And he saw that that, that gave him the righteousness that he needed. He knew that he wouldn't have to bridge the gap to God because God had jumped the gap over to him. And it was that realization that changed his life. Here's what he wrote when he finally got to that part of Romans that we read today. He's like, I felt myself newborn. All the scriptures appeared different to me. Instead of hating, now I intensely love God's righteousness. And this change turned the world upside down. But it was sparked in one heart by God who showed one man the truth. It was the heart of the Reformation. It was really a reformation of one person's heart. And here's the thing. We, as Lutherans, love to lift Martin Luther up. But Martin Luther wasn't the first to undergo this change of heart. And he isn't the last to have undergone. You look through the Bible, it's full of people who have been touched by God and changed their lives. Abraham, Moses, David, Peter, Paul. After that, you, I guess I should say Peter, Paul, and Mary. <laughs> just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Augustine, Wesley, Bart, Tillich, C.S. Lewis. All of these people who had this encounter with the truth that changed their hearts. Martin Luther isn't alone. But I want to tell you that God is still doing this today. God still reforms hearts today. As I think there are a lot of people that can understand what Luther felt. Maybe you're one of them. Maybe you feel like you haven't lived up to your potential. Maybe you don't feel like you're a good enough parent or a good enough son or daughter. Maybe you're not a good enough spouse or a good enough friend. No matter how hard you try, you just can't be the kind of person that you want to be. Maybe you don't feel like you, you can be that kind of person. Maybe you, like Luther, live with guilt. And deep inside, you're not sure if you're good enough for God. Maybe you're so wrapped up in the details of your life that you just can't find the time for God. 
You know you should, you think you should, but you over and over again fail to make it a priority and you feel bad about it. Or maybe even you're angry at God. Perhaps life didn't turn out the way it was supposed to, the way you had pictured it. You didn't get what you wanted out of this life. One thing I've learned as a pastor is that everybody struggles with something. Everybody. I don't care how pretty a picture you paint on the outside. I don't care how good you look in other people's eyes. Everybody struggles with something. And a lot of you are struggling today. So the question is, can your heart reform? And I think the answer is yes. Because God is still at work. You don't have to be good enough. You don't have to be successful in the eyes of the world. You don't have to do everything right. It's okay to fall short. If you're running a race of life and you're doing the absolute best you can, but you just keep getting tripped up and falling, that's all right, because that's where God is, right where you fell, to pick you up, to say it's okay. God says you don't have to run the perfect race. Just run the race for me. Run the race for me. God can carry you when you get tired. God can heal your wounds. God can be your strength when you cannot finish on your own. And you don't have to earn that. It's a gift. God wants you to know the truth. And that truth is Jesus Christ. And the truth will set you free. I want to share one quick story with you about a uh, little boy who is with his sister and they're visiting grandparents, his grandparents. And on his birthday, his grandmother gives him a, a slingshot. So he goes out in the back in the woods and he's trying so hard to hit a target with that slingshot. And no matter how hard he tries, he cannot hit anything. It's driving him crazy. So he's walking back in the woods and he ends up in the backyard of his grandmother's house and he happens to look out of the corner of his eye and he sees his grandmother's pet duck waddling across the yard. And without even thinking, he just turns around. He's never hit anything in his life. Why would he hit it now? He turns around and whack! Hits the duck right in the head. And the duck falls dead. As he grabs that duck, he picks it up and he takes it over to try to hide it in a wood pile. And he, he's trying to, to bury the evidence when he looks over and he sees his sister was watching the whole time. So after lunch that day, Grandma said, Sally, let's do the dishes. Let's wash the dishes. But Sally said, oh, no, Grandma. Um, Johnny told me that he wanted to help in the kitchen today. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> she looks over and says, remember the duck. Johnny, the dishes. Later, Grandma asked the children want to go out fishing. Grandma said, I'm sorry, but I need Sally here to help me make supper. And Sally smiled and said, no, no, that's all taken care of. Johnny wants to help make supper tonight. Don't you, Johnny? So Johnny stayed while Sally went fishing. This went on for several days of Johnny doing his chores and Sally's chores, and finally he couldn't stand it anymore. And he went to his grandma, and he had tears in his eyes. And he said, Grandma, I need you to know something. I accidentally killed your duck, your pet duck. And she looked back, and she said, I know. I know. And she gave him a hug. She said, I was standing looking out the window, I saw the whole thing. But you know what? I love you, and I've already forgiven you. I was wondering how long you were going to let Sally make a slave of you. I'm afraid sometimes that we, met, we let other things make slaves of us when we're already forgiven, when we're already accepted. You can experience that reformation you can be set free from the prison of doubt. You can be set free from the shackles of sin. Jesus came so that you are not locked behind those iron bars of guilt and inadequacy. Jesus came to break those bars down. He came to tear the chains that bind you. He came to open the door to a life of freedom and hope and trust and faith and courage and joy. And he knows that the truth will set you free. That truth changed Martin Luther and so many other people. 
that truth changed the world. But the question I want to ask you today is, can that truth change you? In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and 